Diminished seventh chords play a special role in music, but their function is quite different from more conventional chords and can be neglected in our songwriting as a result. Let's begin by looking at the ingredients that make up a diminished seventh chord. From the root, we have the intervals of a minor third and diminished fifth, together known as a diminished triad, and then a diminished seventh interval. This crucial diminished seventh interval is confusingly labelled as a double flat seven. I don't want to get too much into the theory behind why we use a double flat, and you can read up on it. But in short, it's to do with how the intervals of this unique seventh chord are stacked in minor thirds. Don't be put off learning about these chords due to theoretical anomalies like double flat. It's the sound and function of these chords that truly matters, and that's what we're going to explore. Played by itself, the diminished seventh chord creates a distinctively tense and dramatic sound. You'll see this chord abbreviated as dim seven, or with a small circle and seven next to the root letter. Before we look at the ways we can use diminished seventh chords in progressions, it's useful to understand their symmetry. Here I'm playing a C diminished seventh chord with the C root on the fifth string. If we lay out the intervals across that root string, we can see that each tone is separated by a minor third interval, or three frets if you like. This consecutive sequence of minor thirds, from root to octave, creates what is known as symmetry. In practical terms, it means we can move any diminished seventh shape up the neck in minor thirds and will essentially be playing in versions of the same chord. Another example of this starting on E diminished 7, using a shape with the root on the 4th string. Another example starting on G diminished 7 using a 6th string root shape. So keep in mind that, in all the examples we'll be looking at, you can position the diminished 7th shape in several places, based on its minor 3rd symmetry, to create different voicings of the same chord. Let's now look at how diminished seventh chords can function in our progressions. Let's say we were in the key of C major. So C major is our one or tonic chord. If we wanted to move to the two chord, D minor in this key, we might place a diminished seventh chord between these two chords as a passing chord. So D flat diminished seven would lead up to D minor from our C major tonic. Let's hear this movement within a larger progression. Using the minor third symmetry concept from earlier, we could also play E diminished 7 before D minor to get a similar effect. Another example in E major.
The diminished seventh chord also commonly occurs between the four and five chords in major keys. For example, in the key of G major, C major would be our four chord and D major our five chord. So we could place a C sharp diminished seven chord in between C and D. We might climb our way to this chord as follows. So whenever you find yourself on the four chord of a major key, a diminished seventh chord can be seen as one fret up from that. What we've done so far is fill whole step gaps in the natural major key with a diminished seventh chord between the one and two and four and five. And using the chord symmetry, the diminished seventh between four and five also fills the whole step gap between two and three. The diminished seventh between one and two also fills the whole step gap between six and seven. So one effective way to use diminished seventh chords is to place them between the natural chords of the key as passing chords. Another common example of this you'll hear, particularly in jazz styles such as bossa nova, is the diminished seventh between the two and three. Here we're in the key of F major, with G minor as the two chord. So the diminished seventh chord tends to act as a passing link between chords in a key. Here's an example of taking this concept to its extreme in the key of B major. The diminished seventh chord can also work as a dominant substitute in both major and minor keys. Take the relationship between five and one in C major. We could replace that G5 chord with a diminished seventh chord built on the seven position. That's simply one fret down from the tonic root. Therefore, in C major, B diminished seven would be our dominant substitute. And using the symmetry from earlier, we can again take this up the neck to relative positions. For example, in the four position of F and beyond. We can hear a tension resolution effect with the diminished seventh chord in these positions, similar to how the dominant functions. In minor keys, the diminished seventh chord is used in a similar way typically to create more tension over the V chord. In the key of A minor, for example, E7 would be our dominant chord, based on the harmonic minor scale. Now hear what happens when we play a relative diminished seventh chord, B diminished seven in this case, over the E. What we've essentially done here, by playing the diminished seventh shape over the E, is add a minor second interval to the dominant. And using the symmetry once again, we can move this tension up the neck as follows. So there are some effective ways to use diminished seventh chords in your music. Experiment with them and let your ears be the ultimate judge. Use the lesson page linked in the description to learn more at your own pace.
Please also don't forget to like and share this video if it's helped. Cheers.